Tilda wants to know, which of your books should I read first? I'm 22 and I am autistic. I probably would not read Navigating Autism. Navigating Autism is really, really good for a parent who gets diagnosed. And then, and then I've got the way I see it. This would be the how-to book. Okay, you read, you read Navigating Autism so you don't completely freak out and you know how to deal with it. Then you read this one for the instructions. For an older person, I would actually recommend different, not less. Because this is 18 people, in their own words, I was the editor for this book, in their own words, uh, telling about their life. I actually learned a lot from that. Yeah. And where the diagnosis helped in that situation was relationships. For a lot of older people, diagnosis was a huge relief. I'm seeing in kids, especially fully verbal ones, the diagnosis is holding them back, actually. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. getting label locked. Single most important thing that Deborah said, and she invented this term, label locking. Really important. Also, this book's got some great chapters on medical conditions associated with autism, like gastrointestinal, skin problems, other conditions, uh, psychiatric conditions, anxiety, OCD. Uh, they have this, doctors have this awful word, comorbidity. I hate that word. I'd rather call them coexisting. That's yes. That's the way an engineer might say it. I prefer that. Yes. And I don't like the word morbid either. Comorbid. I mean, it sounds like it's half dead or something. I don't know. Exactly. Um, because morbidity is sickness, mortality is death, I guess, in medicine. I yeah. Not very nice terms. But it's important to recognize that, you know, the, the, you know some of these things are associated. Because I had a lot of problems with anxiety. And I, and in my book, Thinking in Pictures, I talk about how medication helped me. And that can get to be a controversial subject. But I don't think I'd be here without medication. I've got a whole chapter in Thinking in Pictures about my experiences with anxiety. It was burning me up all through 20s, getting worse and worse and worse. I did the dip fat project shown in the movie without the medication. It went on in my early 30s. I don't think I'd be here without the medication. Wow. I don't have any innards left. Wow. I, I got colitis so bad that I was counting calories in yogurt to hmm. make sure I ate enough so I wouldn't lose too much weight. Wow. And I can remember doing that. Well, I, I want to know what you did to change that. And Samuel has written in and said, how do you deal with change? It's been very hard for me in the pandemic. And we see that for a lot of folks, they're really struggling with anxiety as a result of the pandemic. Well, so knowledge, what did you do? knowledge is power. When I was a child, I had a little notebook and it said all the notebooks our school gave out had knowledge is power on it. Well, you know what I did? Every way to treat COVID, I read about Every mm -hmm. scientific paper on COVID I read. And, you know, there's a lot of controversy about old treatments, so I'm not going to discuss them because they're too politically charged. Yeah. I stockpiled some of the stuff. I went deep, deep into the science. And I was very careful not to get COVID. The Delta variant hadn't come out. I, I, did, I went to Lamb Feed Yard. We have a meat, a meat lab on campus. I used to go over there. Very, very carefully, staying away from everybody. Uh, go look at the cattle, just have something to do. And I think I could have treated COVID if I got it. Okay. And I can't go into any more than that That's because right. of the controversy surrounding it. But I am a very good surfer when it comes to scientific literature. And I know how to separate the BS from the real stuff. So the knowledge in the case of knowledge, COVID. knowledge, something. Now, I just finished, was reading an article. I'm working on a, a paper on visual thinking and how people do management. Let's read this paper here about two different managers on the Fukushima nuclear power plant disaster. One manager, there were two stations, the one totally trashed, and another station they managed to prevent totally badness from happening, even though it was wrecked. Um, one manager gave his employees all the knowledge. Every bit of knowledge, knowledge on the earthquake, knowledge on what was wrecked in the plant. The other manager sitting in an office uh, several miles away on a TV monitor. He was the suit. Oh, look at this cool thing I got. This came from one of our local meat plants. got a cow in a suit right there. I just had to get this squeezy toy. And I'm going to squeeze the suit. And, and so one of the managers was a total suit, thinking he could do it from a windowless control room. The other guy's out there telling his people everything. Yeah, the basement's flooded. There's fish swimming in the basement. You know, the emergency cooling pump is underwater, and there's fish swimming over it right now. Uh, we're really in trouble. But he gave 
his people all of the information. And for me, that helped. I, instant vaccines were available. I got them instantly, instantly. Oh, yeah. and I got my first shot. I was like, oh, I'm going to have freedom. Yeah. That's going to be really wonderful. Yeah. But I seem to recall you had some pretty funky uh, dreams that night too. Well, yeah, I did. I had a, I had an airport anxiety dream because I knew I was, I'd been grounded for a whole year. I couldn't fly obviously because of the, I, I didn't want to take, I, I, did, I learned about maybe ways that might be able to treat COVID, but on the other hand, I didn't want to risk it. Yeah. I wasn't going to test the knowledge, let's put it that way. So I was not ready to get on an airplane until I was fully vaccinated. There you and go. So I got my first shot and then I dreamed that I went to the one of the, some airport somewhere and I left my wallet in a restaurant and I got it back. All of the cards were missing license, credit cards, my school ID, everything. And I was just ready, ready to look where the money was. And I woke up. Oh, very good. Very good. Thank goodness. It was just a nightmare and not reality. Cause canceling was, all those cards. Not oh, fun. I can tell you losing a wallet. I've been through that. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? And it, and it lasts for months. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.